Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros Sports Companion Show. Is that this show? It is. It is this show, D'Anthony. Jesus Christ. It's a special day. What happened? Today. Um, a lot of shitty coaching moves. Eh, uh, I mean, I, I make a lot of bets. I make a lot of bets. I make one side bet every single year on the Ohio State-Michigan game. Usually, there's a Michigan fan out there who's just like, fuck you, this is our year. Newsflash, Michigan fans, it is never your fucking year. We're at eight in a row now. Uh, We've crossed the 3,000 day mark since you've actually beaten the Ohio State University. The guy I used to bet against... Stop paying his bets. He was so angry that he stopped paying his bets. The last one was a signed Dwayne Haskins helmet, and he never sent it. Lied and said he did. Um, Steve, what was his name? Steven something. Anyways. Steve ran his EC. That's the guy that pretended he was at 9-11. Yes. From the league. That's the guy. Um, I forget forget Steven's last name. Either way, he was so (laughs) pissed off. He lied about the helmet, and then when I said, hey, man, because I'll go dark on people. Mm-hmm. Like I contacted the eBay listing that he said he got it from, and they were like, man, nobody's bought this helmet. Um, and I was like, you fucking liar. And he's the one I won that Urban Meyer thing off of. Mm-hmm. So I had to find a new Michigan fan. And then we do it with one person every year. Otherwise, I'd have fucking shit flying in from all over the country. Well, over the last seven eight, years or so, eight years, eight, yeah, years. eight years now, I guess. Yeah. Or, look, 16 out of the last 17 years. I right. mean, it would, it would be brutal. Uh, this year, it was Drew Lamax. And Drew is in studio today. And the bet was this, D'Anthony. Starter jackets are back. They're not, actually. No, nah, they, they are. Ex- they exist again, but they're not back in the sense that you're saying where people should be wearing them. Because you should not be wearing them. Yeah, you, sh- you should be wearing no, them. you look like an asshole. They are beautiful jackets. And I go members only. The, you have to, yeah. for you, obviously, because yep. you're a big Phil Collins fan. I am, yeah. Me, personally, um, Soup, soupy naughty overlay. by nature, so I, I like a lot of starter shit. On my on my body on my person, and the bet was, hey man, you got to come in studio and drape this on me like James Brown, mm-hmm. and uh, that's going to happen. Are today. you going to smoke a bunch of crack and put activator in your hair first, or I should? I, I've earned it. I've earned the right, I mean, haven't I? We're close to James Brown's hometown. It's about four hours from here. I feel like it. I feel like we are. We're close enough. Yeah. Uh, ha! Jamie, uh, come on in, brother. I, I want to get a nice, nice two shot for the video crowd. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do. Drinking Bros podcast on YouTube. I, I was trying to think of a song to play myself in, and I think it's Walking in Memphis. No. Walking with my feet 10 feet off a beer. Walking in Memphis. Again, there's no S when he sings Walking in Memphis in that entire song. Um, how's that shot, Jamie? How do I look? Do I look. We look nice. I look beautiful on this. Great. Uh, Drew Lamax, come on in. Come on in and, uh, and, and drape this beautiful jacket on me, sir. Oh, broad, I've got broad shoulders. Oof. Is that comfy? Yeah, it is. It is. Oh, <laughs> this is a nice fit. I, I feel like saying, it was then that I carried you. Uh, you're welcome, Drew. Look at this. Look at this jacket. God, this is no lie. This is the most comfortable jacket of all time. It's not. Dude. I haven't had it's one of It's made these out since of materials s- that will literally give you cancer. Seven years old. Anything that was made in the 80s gives you cancer. We know that now. Straight is asbestos. That true? Yes, is motherfucker. True? Everything from the 80s gives you cancer. Man, look at this. <laughs> Drew, thank you very much. Where'd you get this from? Uh, eBay. Did you really? Yep. I didn't know if it was a Kohl's purchase. No, no. some guy made it in his fucking basement. It's probably made out of the skins I hope so. of graduates <laughs> of Ohio of, State. Of Michigan fans. Well, no, because they're not that red. It'd be great uh, if it was. Drew, what, what happened to Michigan this year? Because, look, the bowl game just happened. You guys got uh, just ash trashed by uh, Bama. Yeah, we started out decent in the game. I mean, we were, you know, containing them and – can you know a lot of three and outs but then it was like the second half they just came back out as alabama again and mm. we tanked like we do yeah um let me ask you this is a, this is a dead serious question because i've said this on the show um right after the the ohio state loss people are bitching about hardball i think you have to keep them at this point 
Um, I don't know who else is out there coaching wise that you can get that is better than him. I, I just I'm starting to think, and I, I hate to say this because I, I wish they were great because it would be good for college football. Same with, same way I feel about Tennessee. Um, is it a second tier program now where you're just not getting the recruits? Like, what what is happening up there? I have absolutely no idea at this point. It's like, what it feels like though, yeah, right? Because it's a bunch of transfer quarterbacks, yeah. but they're not a Justin Fields. We have we have like a top ten class almost year in and year out. Yeah, you guys were know. number I think eleven this year for uh, recruits. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, like we're right there every year, but then we bring in transfer quarterbacks and don't play the guys that we recruited, and it just I, I don't know it blows my mind. Because I your backup quarterback is Dylan McCaffrey, right? And in the short periods that i've seen him play when he actually gets to play he's looked pretty fucking decent is he going to be the starting quarterback in michigan this year i hope so i mean they're i guess they're looking at somebody from uh boise or something like that another transfer yeah Ugh, you know what boy. they should do is uh get tom brady back <laughs> well he's, he's gonna done in the nfl but he's he's uh here's, he? here's the thing he's out of eligibility and he's a michigan man you know yeah um, so he's out. Brady used all four years. Oh, did he? Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah the, you're right. They're number 11 I, for look, the 2020 season. I haven't used mine. Um, Clemson's Dan, number one. <laughs> you haven't used yours. Would you consider being the quarterback of, of Michigan? Um, Let's face it. You'd do just as well against Ohio State as the last eight years' worth of quarterbacks for Michigan. Yeah, I'd, pr- I'd probably do that, yeah. Just <laughs> just for to be in the college scene again. Yeah. And I would – like. Jared has this great idea, and I think we should do it. The only problem that we've had so far is navigating the Greek system because it's evaporating everywhere. It is, yeah. But we want to go onto college campuses and show these pussies how to party. Yeah. Like, they think – I remember being in college and partying back then. I'm like, God damn, this is wild. And then I remember the stuff that I did in the military and then into my 30s. Sure. The drugs and all the other stuff. I'm like, you just you guys think that staying up until 4 o'clock in the morning and being fucked up and then going to class at 8 is hardcore. No, we stayed up. Until four o'clock in the morning, getting drunk, and then we ran five miles in formation yeah. afterwards. And yeah. then we got off work and we got really fucking high on mushrooms. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, I think we need to teach a class on how to be, like, how to party responsibly. Sure. Like, I've never died that I'm aware of. No, I look, I haven't either. <clears throat> I've I- never overdosed. I've never woken up in a fucking ditch or the hospital. And I've done more drugs and drank more booze than most of the people i know sure so i feel like we could we have a responsibility at this point to go back to these college campuses i know that's not what we're talking about right now but this is a sports show yeah exactly and college is defined by athletics every year there's a kid that dies on campus and you're just like oh shit like come on dude i know but look nobody's telling that guy he he's 18 or 19 years old. Yeah. He doesn't know shit about life. No, there's no book out there how to fucking get wrecked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there should be. Uh, uh, Drew, I, I appreciate you stopping by the show. Yeah, uh, thanks, I know you're a busy man. Um, I, I'm, I I I want to apologize for this because this is a very nice jacket. After that bowl loss, I'm like just indifferent to what it. What did now. they finish? Eight and four. Uh, nine and four. Nine yeah. and four. Yeah. Oof. God damn it, man. I, they just cannot pull it together. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. But uh, this jacket looks really, really lovely on me. And if you see me out in the wintertime wearing uh, a nice starter jacket from The Ohio State University, don't thank me. Thank Drew Lamax. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Next year. Yeah, are we betting next year? Yeah, absolutely. All right, All right dude. Yep. It's on. It's on. Uh, let's get into the, the playoffs here, Dan. Shall we? Since I'm, I'm wearing the... Ohio State jacket. Uh, let's, You're talking about the college football playoffs? Yeah. Let's uh, let's give it a go here. I've been betting my dick off on uh, mybookie.com forward slash drinking bros. Um, or you, look, use the promo code drinking bros. It'll double your deposit all the way to $1,000. Um, man, 28 and 11. 28 yeah. and 11 is what I finished in bowl games. 28 and 11. If there is somebody out there who's calling college football better than than myself, fucking give me their number, dude. I'd love to have them on the show and just chat with them. This is the best year I've ever had. The reason why I'm telling you this isn't to stroke my own dick right now. It is because D'Anthony and I are going the hardest we've ever gone in show history Mm -hmm. uh, immediately after the show with our bets on the national championship. Mm -hmm. So we won a fuck ton of money. We were 17 games over. 28 and 11 is just absolutely spectacular. 17 games over. 
I'm going to roll that into. Oh, I'm going to bet the house. I'm going to bet it all on um, on the national championship, which we'll get to in a second. Um, but let's talk about how we got there, how we got to these two teams. I was at the LSU Oklahoma game. Um, <laughs> fuck. Let's start with the LSU fans first. Um, there was a guy named Michael Rotolo on Drinking Bro Sports on uh, Facebook. Private group. Join if you're not a member. It's fun. You talk shit. Uh, the LSU fans, man, are... I like LSU. I, I love going there. I enjoy going there. I enjoy Joe, Joe Burrow. I would love to see him win. He was fucking great at Ohio State and just a class act guy. Yep. However, we've this is my second time now seeing LSU this year. The fans are acting like Bama fans. Like they're they've yeah, been great weird. for every single year. I mean, Trey Witzel is one of them, and he he's uh, delusional. Yes, like ever since ever since uh, LSU won, he's he's been constantly posting like LSU by twenty four. Yes, if you think there's a world where LSU beats Clemson by twenty four points. I want to live on that world because it's full of drugs. <laughs> like there's no, there's no like sane, conscious, sober mind that could possibly believe that nonsense. Uh, it, it has gotten so crazy. There was a guy I, f- I finally just blocked him. His name was Ryan Rhodes. He was on the podcast last year. Um, decent dude in real life. I, it, the problem is, man. One, so every year is this: one fan gets overzealous about their team. That's only good once in every like ten years, and they think they're the greatest thing of all mm-hmm. time. That's happened with Notre Dame. It's happened with uh, Georgia fans. Um, now this year it's happening with LSU fans and it's like, Hey man, I can understand if you're Bama or Ohio state or Clemson, mm-hmm. the three of the, those fucking teams have been in the goddamn, it's them every year yep. it, it, for 15 years now at this point, it feels like in Oklahoma, uh, but Oklahoma fans don't talk shit partially cause they don't win anything, but yeah, they know they're not going to win in the playoffs. Yeah. But, <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, the scores of these LSU games have been so astronomical that it's they are literally uh, there's a chick named Sarah Williams too who started hitting me up and was like I posted a picture of me and my kid and I was like why the fuck are you commenting how great LSU is on that like I don't <laughs> give a baker's fuck like this is just the beginning just the beginning no it's the end it is the actual end and I'm gonna tell you this for LSU fans that you have to win this year Burrow is gone yeah. Uh, most of your guys are gone. You're starting over. Starting over with a new quarterback in the SEC, good luck. Well, I mean, you saw it last year with Bur- Burrow. You see how good Burrows is? Remember and, last year? He was Last year he couldn't put up one point against Alabama. One. We were at the game. Yeah, not that was one the, point. And, and that's the, the, the craziest thing to me about that game was we were, in a, we were at LSU, stadium full of LSU fans. Mm-hmm. Couldn't have been nicer people. Couldn't have enjoyed our experience more. Mm-hmm. Tony Tamparello, best in the biz, tailgate-wise, in the country. Um, Tony's a, just a fucking rad guy. Ironically, he's the only guy who hasn't been talking shit at LSU. He's just hopeful no, to win. No, he's, he's just uh, full of booze and sandwiches, I think. He's is great. Why. But he's great. He's, but he's realistic about his team. Where it's just yeah. like, eh. I mean, look, I bet against Ohio State, for Christ's sakes, against Clemson. I don't want to play them. I told everybody on the show I don't want to fucking play those guys. I didn't say Ohio State by 90, even though we've won every game by yeah. what? The highest margin in college football all year long, 45, yeah. something like that. Um, <laughs> when we were at that stadium and they got just fucking curb stomped by Alabama, mm-hmm. they couldn't have been the nicest people in the world. And I was like, oh, shit, maybe this is LSU fans. This year we're seeing the real LSU fans come out. Where it's like, nah, we're going to win by 90. We're going to fucking crank it up. I had to block Ryan Rhodes on Facebook because every post I post, <laughs> he would write, write an LSU comment underneath it. And I was like, Oh my God! I could post about fucking Margot Robbie and be like, "Yep, uh, bet you she'd like to sleep with Joe Burrow from LSU." And it's like, "Fucking a, bro." Um, I can't. I can't hear about it anymore. About LSU, you got to win the title. You got to win the title. You More win importantly, you got to win title. it this year. Yes. Well, they won what ten years ago, in two thousand eleven, I think. They won three yeah. total in their history. One was shared, right? And. In 99 or some shit? I, I think they won like 2005, maybe 11, and then 1958 or something. Like oh, I see. Old, like where, you know, we don't even have any evidence of teams back then, right? Which is fine. They've got three titles total. Mm-hmm. It's rad. Again, you're not Bama or Ohio State. Like, fuck, Ohio State's rolling eight or nine titles. Bama's, I think, what, 15 or something something like that? Like, yeah. It's just not, it's not the school yet, man. Like, give it a few years. Even Clemson, right? We're starting to come around to Clemson as being mm. the greatest of this era. I think they have to win against LSU, which we'll get to in a moment. But if you're LSU, 
Bama is reloading right now. They are fucking fully ready to go. That Mac Jones kid for Alabama at quarterback? Yeah, he's... Jesus Christ, have you ever seen a bigger turnaround in three games than that guy? No. Besides Cardale Jones. Like, that guy looks amazing next year. Yeah. They're in great hands. <clears throat> Bama's in great hands for next year. If Jake Fromm comes back to Georgia, which he should. He had a shitty year this year. Tua just went pro. Uh, he announced yesterday. Um, Joe Burrow is uh, probably going to be the first pick in the draft. Which is a mistake. It's a but mistake. But, it is what it is. Uh, I mean, it's going to happen, I it's think. It's going to happen in Cincinnati. If you're Cincinnati, you've got to fill the seats. Um, with all that being said... You're going up against juggernauts next year. Florida Florida even looked great towards the end of the season once they got that quarterback, right? That Trask? If Trask um, is your quarterback. Yeah, they look pretty good. I, and, hey, the, my sleeper next year of the entire SEC, the, the LSU of this year, do not sleep on Auburn, dude. That Bo Nix kid, uh, being a freshman, starting this mm-hmm. entire year, has had some pretty goddamn impressive wins. He beat Oregon week one. And then he beats Alabama. He hung 48 on Alabama, mm-hmm. for Christ's sakes. And he's a freshman. Um, so the future's bright there as well, man. Uh, and then they got the lane train. Lane train's at Ole Miss. You know, he's going to pull out some bullshit out there. Um, and then Jimbo Fisher and Texas A&M. Look, they played three number one teams this year. Texas A&M will be improved as well. Mm-hmm. So I don't know where LSU fits in that with a brand new quarterback. They have got to win it this year. I'm telling you that right now because it is not going to be next year, man. I can I can already tell you the top four teams for next year. If Fromm stays, one, Clemson. Two, Ohio State. Three, Alabama. Four, Georgia. That's going to be the rankings next year. Ohio State's got everybody coming back, pretty much. Um, I mean, they're just reloading. Uh, Clemson's got everybody coming back. They might be losing a receiver. Who? Uh, but it's not their top guy. So they're so Lawrence is, their defense is mostly coming back. Lawrence is coming back. At the end's coming back. I, I think Etienne is going pro. Oh, but did the, he declare? Yeah. Uh, well, he's no, a junior, not, right? he can't until after the national championship. Oh, I see. So, and that's the problem is the game is so late. It's on the thirteenth. These kids only have until the fifteenth to declare. Yeah. So it's it's kind of a mind fuck for them. But uh, I think he'll declare. Um, and but the backup is great. Same with yeah. J.K. Dobbins for Ohio State. The backup is great. It's Master T. Like great. You're fucking fine. You, you're just Reloaded. Um, two of those receivers out of the four are going to stay for Clemson. Same with Ohio State. It's the same fucking people it's going to be next year. And mm. look, man, even Oklahoma, I, which they'll never play in a bowl game ever again after that LSU game, but um, and, uh, they will not play in the, the playoffs until 2035 mm. uh, after, after that fucking embarrassment. that Because I, I was at that game. Yeah, um, that's pretty bad. And that Rattler kid that they have is going to be a superstar, but... It's not going to matter unless they – they're going to have to go undefeated every year like Notre Dame. That's the only way people are going to put them in the playoffs again. Um, but when I was at the game, at the LSU-Oklahoma game, um, my, I took my son. He's five years old. He has some sweet ticks. And uh, he, he was throwing up a little bit, right? And he looks at me, and this is, a, this is a dead serious story. And he goes, Dad, what happens if I get sick? What happens if I throw up? And I go, well, we're going to go to the LSU game, so – Chances are you're going to see a lot of purple and gold people throwing up all over the place. Mm-hmm. Exactly what I told him. And he, was, he looked at me strange, and he was like, oh, all right. So he, f- he felt better and went to the game. Before, because you've been to that stadium in Atlanta. It's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Um, I would put it onesie-twosies with Jerry World. Um, mm-hmm. And I heard the, the new L.A. stadium is going to beat both of those stadiums coming out. I can't wait to see that next year. I'm <laughs> amped. And then the Raiders stadium looks like the fucking Death Star. That one is going to be interesting. Woo! It's cool. It, it just keeps going up. And uh, anywho, show up, gorgeous stadium. Two LSU fans puked, and it, we we walked into the game around three p.m., four o'clock start. <laughs> puked right in front of a child all over the sidewalk. We are not. The game is not even started yet. This is how unused to winning and competing for national championships mm-hmm. you are every single year. That you're getting that obliterated. That you're puking before the game starts because you're so nervous that it's yeah. going to be over because you're you're not going back next year you're just not um that my my son looks at me and he goes dad you were right and i go i know son i know well lsu knows i think their fans know that they're not this is it for them i don't know right. I, the comments on our on drinking bros sports facebook they're like this is the beginning it's a dynasty we're starting a dynasty now dynasty <sighs> uh which i don't believe in 
Uh, cut to, we go into the game. Um, I had incredible seats at this game. Not so much for, like, we, we always have great tickets for everything. Mm-hmm. But by the people we were around. And I was with a bunch of NFL GMs on accident who were right. there scouting, um, scouting, physically scouting, binoculars. <laughs> it was the shit that you see in movies where you're like, wee, wee, wee. Yeah. We're looking through binoculars and you're like, do you really need to see that close? And they were looking for grips on the ball and all that things. And I was like, Jesus Christ. I sat with four NFL GMs. They were polite, as was I. One of them listens to Drinking Bros, mm-hmm. friend of a friend. He has agreed to come on the show um, right before the draft, so we're going to do that. Um, but he was like, oh, shit, man. I love Drinking Bros. You guys are fucking awesome. He goes, mm-hmm. you're pretty goddamn knowledgeable about, about sports. And he goes, your picks, gambling wise, mm-hmm. are pretty goddamn crazy. And I'm like, yeah, thanks, man. I was like. He's the guy from, uh, well, we won't say what We can't say what organization. But we've, uh, Jared and I have met him before, so he, that's how he knows who we are. Yes. That's, and now he's, it's funny that a guy that works in, that's a GM of a professional team is yes. listening to this bullshit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, it's amazing. And he's just like, dude, you guys are fucking awesome. Um, and he gave me his personal number, and I was just like, all right, sweet. Anywho's. Sitting with him, you know, my, my, again, my kid is five. He was amped to be there, just loves the loud noise, the candy, the, mm-hmm. the you know, popcorn, all that other stuff, right? Uh, so he's watching the game, and I start talking to these GMs, and I'm, and I'm like, what, what are you guys really looking for at this game? Mm-hmm. Because the, the teams that I was sitting with did not have the top pick. So I was like, right, you can't be here for Burrow because he's not going to fall to you guys. Well, I don't think anybody's coming out to scout Burrow at this point. Or Correct. Chase Young or any of the, like No one's probably showing up to scout Travis at the end. If he's going to declare for the draft, I would take him in the first 10 picks. He is an, he's averaging eight yards a fucking carry. So there. 100%. And I, like I go, nobody's going to watch those guys. Well, but, and that's the thing is I go, why aren't you at the Ohio <laughs> State Clemson game? That is filled with 900 NFL. The future of the NFL is – all of the NFL is playing in that game. And yeah. they go – There's probably 20 NFL players playing in that game. I know from the Ohio State side – all 22, yeah. defense and offense, mm-hmm. are, are going in the draft. And they were like, it, it could be the first team ever. Um, and that's, uh, again, according to the GMs. I, look, the guys that have already declared are, fuck, man, six are going in the five or six are going in the first round. Um, but anyways, uh, they said, look, man, we've been at Ohio State and Clemson. Each of them have seen them three times, mm-hmm. they said. And they were like, we've, we're done with that. And I was like, well, who are you, who are you guys here for there? Um, and... It was surprising. There was some so the LSU DBs, mm. uh, they were there for uh, a couple of the LSU receivers, and then uh, and then CD Lamb for Oklahoma. All of them agreed that Jalen Hurts is not an NFL quarterback, which was sad. You say that, but somebody will draft they, him, and they did. And here's the thing: they did say that. They go, yeah. look, uh, teams will draft him in five or six. So if he's around in five or six. We're taking him. We're taking I, him in the fifth or sixth you, round. You want to you want to take some side action on that? I bet he goes in the third round. Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll take some side action. Yeah. Uh, so over under three, right? Yep. All right. Cool. I'm, I'm in. I'm in. Um, so with, uh, with, with all the knowledge that I have now that's going on, I'm fucking way into this game. And it's awful. Mm-hmm. It's the worst goddamn game ever. By the way, I picked LSU plus 14 and a half in that. You took, you took the points. You took LSU plus the points. I, I didn't. All I heard from LSU fans, man, keep betting against it. Yeah. Keep betting against it. I bet on LSU the entire fucking year, man. Yeah. I call that Alabama win six weeks in advance. Every time, like, hosting a show, we pick every single game. No matter what, whoever the fucking losing team is, I will get, man, keep betting against it. It's like, oh, Christ. Um, they blew their doors out. What I was surprised was Oklahoma was so goddamn, that is the worst defense I've ever seen in person. Yeah, it's bad. If you're an LSU fan, do not take any stock in that game. That that is that was a ch- it was children playing defense. Joe Burrow was able to run around and just throw the huck the ball in the air five hundred style, knowing that they weren't going to do anything about it. And all of them, the GM said at the next level, they were like, "Because I said, how good is Joe Burrow going to be?" Mm. I like I like the kid, and they were like, "Man, we like the kid too." And I go, uh, "Would you take him with the first pick in the draft?" All of them said, "No, I would actually." You would? Here's why. It's but it's because of. Like, Tom Brady was not great in college. Mm-hmm. And we didn't have the awareness back then to know who he was as a human being, like what his personality was, that right. he was so driven. We do know because of all the insider bullshit that happens, the better reporting that happens now in sports, we know that Burrow came into that locker room and fucking he is, like, 
he is basically the coach of that team. Yeah. And somebody that has that capability as a 20 year old, 21 year old, uh, he has ball skills too. Like he knows what he's doing out there. He mm-hmm. doesn't throw, he doesn't throw a whole lot of picks. No, he's a smart guy on the field. I think that he's going to be very successful in the NFL. So I, I asked the question, I said, who, who is he then? Who is he in the NFL? Mm-hmm. All of them said the same person. They said he is the next Alex Smith. He will be smart. He won't make any mistakes. He will not be able to throw that deep ball um, because you cannot lob it up like that against a defense like right. uh, Oklahoma. In the NFL, they're like, you'll get picked every time. But they're like, he'll manage a game. He's not going to make any mistakes. But he's not maybe, the superstar. Maybe. If he's got people like, I don't know, DK Metcalf who can jump out of the fucking stadium, it doesn't really maybe. matter. Maybe. Like, if you pair him up with the right people, he had 55 touchdowns and six interceptions this year. Yeah. You cannot teach that. Like, you cannot teach Jameis Winston how to do that. Ever. Jameis, Jameis Winston, Winston had 5,000 yards this year. He's had 5,000 <laughs> yards and 33 <laughs> touchdown passes and 31 interceptions. Yeah. So it's like, you can't teach good decision making. No. And Joe Burrows knows who he is. I think so, so. I think so. When's the last, like, Tom Brady throws, what, 3D passes a game? And it's usually a surprise. Like when we were at the AFC Championship, yeah. that yeah, ball yeah, he yeah, threw yeah. down the left side to Gronk at the end. Oh, that the was Super a, Bowl, yeah. The yeah. Super Bowl, yeah. yeah. That was a surprise to everyone. Oh, yeah. And it, it's like a guy who threw – it's like Greg Maddox. Greg Maddox never threw over – I mean, he could throw 96, mm-hmm. uh, but he never threw over 92, really, because he knew he didn't have to. But when he did throw 94, 95, it zoomed right past people. So it, I, I asked him about this, right? And <clears> I said, if he's an Alex Smith, right, and can game manage and not throw picks – isn't that not somebody you want? And they go, it's not the superstar quarterback that you can sell your entire franchise on. And I said, all right, well, who, who was your first pick in the draft? Yeah. If you could have anybody. And he said, all of them across the board said Chase Young. Right. And they just, all, all they pointed to is they said, look, look at what the Boses are doing out there on the West Coast. They're just tearing people's arms off. And they were like, man, you can build a defense around a generational talent like that. I understand it. Uh, but for Cincinnati... I understand why Cincinnati is going to draft him because it's an Ohio kid. They've got to fill that stadium. It is fucking empty. And Joe Burrow will do that at least. So Here are the last several number one picks. Kyler uh, Murray? Kyler Murray. And Bosa went second, right? Yeah. <laughs> Bosa's playing for a Super Bowl this year. Kyler Murray won three games. Um, the next one is, you remember? Is it the other Bosa? No. Who? Come on, man. Fuck, I... Fucking Cleveland Browns. Oh, that's right. Baker Mayfield. <laughs> God damn it, man. I for, <laughs> I always forget about him because I, I knew he was going to be the a number... bust. All the Cleveland fans rode my ass about it, and then now they're like, oh, fuck. The sorry, number man. two pick in that draft? No. Uh, Saquon Barkley. <laughs> 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 oh, and that, it gets it gets worse though. So, uh, two, 2017 was Miles Garrett. He was absolutely the best pick. Yeah, I think yes, yes, um, yes. And that was Cleveland again. Yeah, yeah. That was a good pick because yep. he is a fucking. Uh, I mean, if, as long as he's not, he's great. I mean, as long as he's to, not ripping somebody's yeah, head off or anybody. Uh, yeah. The next year, it's uh, Jared Goff. Ooh, Jeff, Jerry's still out on him. And then Carson Wentz. And then Joey Bosa after that. I would take Joey Bosa over both of the I would if if I could have Jared Goff as my number one quarterback and Carson Wentz as my backup, I would trade them both for, for Joey Joe Bosa. Bosa. So would I. In a fucking both heartbeat. Both Bosa's. Either one. You give me a Bosa. Flip number a fucking four coin. number four pick is Zeke. Number Oof. number five is Jalen Ramsey. It's like, what the fuck, man? I know hindsight is twenty twenty, but stop Damn. drafting quarterbacks number one unless it's goddamn John Elway and Dan Marino and fucking Steve uh c- come on, man. Young. It's, it's, young, like, yeah. it's like you know if a guy is a generational talent or not. Yeah. If he's not, do not draft him number one. I don't so care. So you still go Burrow number one? I would not, no. Oh, but that's okay. definitely yeah. going to happen. I, yeah, no, well, it is. It is definitely going to happen. And, and all the GMs have, have agreed on it. Look, if you're the Bengals, I get it, man. you got to make some money at some point, um, fill those seats. And he's a great kid. So, yeah. fuck, man. Good for him. And uh, we'll see if he gets his How much money ending. does uh, the, the number first one pick, pick get? He's about 40, about 40 million. It's not bad. It's great. 40, 45 million. He's fine. Uh, that kid deserves it. So I, I, I'm sure it'll be him. And then, man, the Redskins are going to get a steal at two with Chase Young. Jesus Christ. That guy just fucking eats people's faces off. 2015 was uh, Jameis Winston and Marcus Mariota. Um, Amari Cooper was fourth. Eh. 
neither. To, if you if there's an Alabama receiver in the draft, draft him. Yeah, Jerry, Jerry Judy. Judy's coming out this year. Jerry yeah. Judy should be. He he, he and Chase Young should be one two. I think opinion. so too. Yeah, but it's not going to happen. So. No, I think so too. Uh, Jerry Judy's fucking great. Yeah. Um, He's going to be. For, go see Julio Jones if you want to see an yeah. Alabama receiver. Um, man, <laughs> that's, whatever. Yeah. It's just it's there's no point in even fucking trying to tell NFL GMs what to do anymore. As a matter of fact, NFL GMs make a lot of interesting decisions. They like do coaching decisions. Yeah. I, hey. So I asked the GMs in particular. I was like, so one team, one of the teams is one of the ones that I've gotten in some arguments with on Drinking Bros Sports on Facebook. It was refreshing to hear him say, "Hey, man, that guy is not that fucking good." And I was like, "Thank you." But I, it's a secret that I can't tell or share for a very long time, yeah. um, either until he gets fired or whatever. Um, and I was like, oh, man, I wish I could tell someone this. Yeah. Because there's a <laughs> certain group of fans that were just like, yeah, this guy's awesome. We're awesome. No, even the GM thinks he sucks, and they're looking around for other people. Yeah. And they're ruthless, by the way. The way they talk is ruthless. It's so much fun. And they'll pick apart every player. So at that LSU-Oklahoma game, I said, all right, that Jefferson kid for uh, LSU had four touchdowns in the first half. And I go, so who's the receiver that you guys are all here scouting? Like, who is who's yeah. the guy? All of them said the same thing. They were like, Jerry Judy's going to be gone by the time it gets gets to us, you know? Yep. Um, and so they were like, man, I, we think personally that it's CeeDee Lamb. CeeDee Lamb will be the, the onesie-twosie with Jerry Judy as the best wide receivers in this draft. And I was really surprised to hear that, actually. Um but he goes, you know, they all said, look, Jalen Hurts is throwing the fucking ball. I go, wait till he gets an NFL receiver, an uh, NFL quarterback. Yeah, no great. Kidding. And I was like, shit. <clears throat> so don't be surprised to see to see CeeDee Lamb go between 12 and 19. That's all I will say. Um, right now, uh, CBS Sports has Tua going fifth to the Dolphins. There's no fucking way, right? I don't think so. Like, I would rather have Jalen Hurts than Tua. Ugh. Tua doesn't. I, he, Tua said today that he doesn't even know if he's going to be able to play. Next Tua six one in his dreams. Yeah. That motherfucker's not six foot one. No. Uh, by the way, every NFL GM said the Dolphins would would select him. They go if he declares and goes pro, which he just did yesterday. They said they the Dolphins will take him and uh, and then stash him because they don't give a fuck. And I was like, oh god, with the fifth pick. So the Dolphins traded everybody to get all these picks. Yeah, and now and they're, they're going to take a guy who can't play for two years, like. Based on this board right now, Burrow is going to go to the Bengals, Chase Young to the Redskins, mm-hmm. uh, Jedrick Wills uh, from Alabama, offensive lineman, and yep. Andrew Thomas go next, and then Tua. The Dolphins have a chance to draft Jerry Judy or Travis at the end, two guys that are <laughs> definitely 100% going to be NFL superstars. Yeah. No. Uh, or the best corner in the draft, they get Jeffrey Okuda. Like fuck, yeah, Okuda, yeah. Jesus Christ, uh, this this draft is loaded. By the way, it is. Yeah, I mean, it's as loaded. long as you choose wisely, <laughs> it is loaded. It's more loaded on defense than offense, but it's loaded. Either it way. is loaded. Um, like there's there's probably there's probably five edge rushers that could go in the top ten. Yeah, but they're going to be spread out just because of the needs of the teams. But yeah, yeah, yeah. They have Jerry Judy going to. Uh, to Denver with the 15th pick. Ooh, I, I actually like that. Drew Locke looked good towards the end of the year. That'd mm-hmm. be fun. Um, but to put a, a nice little bow on this bonnet here for the LSU-Oklahoma game, mm. um, that was the only interesting part of that game was hanging with these dudes and uh, getting to pick their brain for a little bit, talking shit, talking shop. And uh, when one of them's going to come on uh, right before the draft, um, had a, a rad time. But that being said, if you're an LSU fan and you're – you're trying to look at that game and say we're the best in the world. No, you played an awful fucking mm-hmm. football team that did not deserve to be there. Will not go back to the playoffs for 15 years. And uh, and I've never. I can honestly say this, and I'm not. I'm not exaggerating. That is the worst defense I've ever seen in oh, person. Yeah. I mean, it's come on. And I and I got to see it from a. With the GMs in this like weird above nook and cranny place in the stadium, it was rad. It, it felt like I was watching a video game where you could see all the mistakes and like I don't even know where the DBs and safeties were going. Like I, I have never seen something that awful uh, as far as the defense goes in my life. Um, well, you have uh, like a t- a team like Oklahoma can get 
Division One level athletes for sure. Yeah. So it's not a matter of athleticism. That means their coaching staff is that bad at defense. That yeah, they, should that should be tr- more troubling to you. Look, if you if you throw a defensive scheme out there and you have bad athletes and you get beat, that is what it is. I mean, you got beat. That's just what it is. Yeah. And LSU should take something like that and be proud of it. Like our we are more athletic and our scheme is better. Period. Yeah. You played a team that didn't have a scheme. So Clemson's not like that. Ohio State has been scoring 60 points a game and they I put know. up 23 points against Clemson. Well, did they? Did they Dan? They put because up they probably put up uh 30. Four, probably 40. Nah. Two touchdowns were called back. One of them was okay. I, I was okay with it. The the scoop, I think by the letter of the law, it was technically they were, the 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 refs were right, but that we've talked about this before. That rules. We've been talking well, about the refs this for called a it a years. touchdown on the field in both instances. Yeah, I don't know who is the booth in. Is that in another? Is it's that New York? New York? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we'll we'll get to that game next because all of this is going to feed into our picks for for the national championship, obviously, and we're going like I said, extremely fucking hard on this uh, game. So <coughs> I'm going to break down this Clemson game versus Ohio State because I, I, me personally, I'm still pissed off about this. The three worst calls that I hate in football, college and NFL, Mm -hmm. targeting, um, I think it should be with malicious intent um, to, to, fuck. It's hard to prove intent. Sort of. You look at Indomitian Sue or somebody like that where you're just like, all right, you're just a fucking asshole. Like, throw this guy out of the game. Or, you know, somebody throwing a fist at somebody. Like, that play... Because we're Ohio State was up sixteen to zero at that point. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was smashing the dick out of Clemson, and it was fourth and eighteen, and it they they'd sacked they'd sacked Lawrence. Right, yep. we were probably going to get the ball at the fifty for Ohio State. I mean, here's my biggest issue with first of all, I don't like targeting, and I think it should be malicious intent and malicious intent only. It's hard to judge when a guy's going down or, or ducking or you're running that fast. I mean, you and I have been on the field for a lot of these games. Mm-hmm. It is so fucking fast. Yeah. To, to try to pull your head up or go to a side or move to a side is really, really tough. It is, although I thought uh, that Clowney hit, he probably could have been ejected for that, to yes. be honest. Yes, like uh, 100%. He, he led with his head the whole time and drove a guy into the ground. That like, should have been to an me, immediate that's, ejection. Exactly, and that's the difference. I think that was malicious intent, where the other kid, it just looked like a fucking tackle. Um, that Clowney hit was malicious, and he was trying to knock that motherfucker out of the game, and he did. Yeah. And, the, and Seattle won that, and we'll get to that game in a second. But that's, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That sh- should be an ejection. Um, I mean, Jesus, even the angle of, of Wentz going down, to get your head to go into that guy, you could only do that if you were doing that on purpose. Yeah, he had to launch his head at Wentz's <laughs> head, basically. Uh, so <laughs> I hate that call. Um, the next one is the catching the ball and then completing the catch on the ground. Yeah, it's weird. The NCAA rules are weird about that. Well, it, here's the thing. In the in the case of, of J.K. Dobbins, he caught the ball midair, turned, mm-hmm. and then stretched his arm out to reach over the plane. Mm-hmm. And then when he hit the ground, the ball came out. But he, he had already crossed the plane. Mm-hmm. He was clearly diving for the line. I don't like that play. What, what the fuck else are you supposed to do then? Um, and I know this has happened with like Des Bryant and a bunch of those guys. But if you've already caught the ball mm-hmm. with two hands and then you stretch with one hand to reach for the goal line, mm-hmm. once you've crossed the line, that should be it. I don't, I don't understand that call. I, I, you know, once they broke it down and said, oh, well, you know, according to NCAA rule 90.4 section 80 dash D skittle dicks and, and kaleidoscopes. Yeah, it's a fucking thing. And I was like, all right, whatever, man. Walk out of there with a field goal. Now, the last one, the, the, the other touchdown was overturned. The, the scoop and score. Yeah. That motherfucker took four steps. Yeah, it's weird that that rule uh, as well is is odd to me. I mean, I guess it's technically the same rule, but uh, what does it mean? Like the the rule book is specific yet vague at the same time. Like it yeah, says, a, you have to make a football, a football play. move. For example, yeah. a couple of examples or others. List how many moves can there be? List them all. And if List it's not all. one, if it's not one of those, then it's a fumble or it's it's an incom- incompletion. But yeah. if it's one of those, like if you catch the ball with both hands, and I mean, I, I think it's obvious in in slow motion if a guy has possession or not. Most of the time, not only possession, but the, the amount of steps, right? So he took well, four the steps, steps don't matter because you could be bobbling the ball. Like what, what is exactly? It? But he he had possession and then he had four steps. So my my thing with this is. 
my my problem with this is the football move. They said, well, he didn't turn up field. Well, he was getting tackled. He couldn't turn up field. So what are you going to do then? And then watching all of this, bull, like, not only am I pissed off about the game when it ends, obviously, um, uh, and I know a lot of people are like, oh, I think she did not kick field goals or whatever. We scored two touchdowns. Then we had to kick field goals. Yeah. Um, and I say we because, yes, I'm on the team. I'm wearing a starter jacket on video. You can see this on YouTube and mm-hmm. understand that I, I probably am part of the team. Um, all these pundits on ESPN and Fox News or Fox Sports and you know NBC Sports and everything, they spent the entire last week and a half saying Clemson doesn't deserve to be there. That they, the Ohio State should have scored that touchdown. It was like, motherfucker, the game's over now. You can't go back and change it. It's yeah. like the Saints last year. Yeah. Once the call is made, you can't go back and change it. Why spend the next 12 days saying Clemson doesn't be there? Because to be honest, if I'm Dabo Sweeney, mm. I take all of these <laughs> motherfuckers on TV who saying Clemson doesn't deserve to be yeah, there. Yeah, because that's the narrative he's been trying to push forever. Anyways. Forever. And all he's going to do is just play that on a loop for his players and be like, hey, well, they're saying Clemson doesn't Here, deserve to be here. Here's the only explanation I heard of any of this with, Clem- uh, with that particular catch that made any sense to me. The explanation was that uh, homeboy, the receiver for Clemson, was fighting for possession of the ball with the the cornerback. So the fact that he was moving his hands around on the ball and the guy was swatting at his arms and reaching for the ball meant that he didn't truly have possession until he broke away from that guy's reach or whatever the fuck and then make a football play. That's right. a lot of stuff to have to do. Like I get that, it. But when he did break away, <clears throat> he held the ball out with one hand. Yeah. So not only did he have possession with two, then he had it with one. Well, and, that was part of it, though. That was the whole that, fucking that, thing. That was man. the part where they said he was struggling against the dude to keep to get control of the ball, and moving his arms away like that was part of that struggle to get away from him. That was that's why they called it an incompletion. I guess I get it, but fuck, man. I, I me personally, I don't. I, I get oh Ryan Day, the coach <laughs> of Ohio State, after the game, saying, "Look." When you have three terrible calls like that, it is rare that they go against the same team for all of that shit. Two were overturned. Oh, no, I'm sorry. All three were overturned by New York. So they weren't calls on the field. Even yeah. the targeting wasn't called on the field. Um, well, targeting so, usually isn't. Targeting, I, I, I think I read something the other day, like most of the targeting that was called in the uh, NCAA this year was called from, from the booth. From the booth, yeah. So, look, it, it is what it is. We picked, I, we, you and I picked Clemson to win this game anyways. Yeah. Um, but... Once Ohio State was stomping them, I was like, oh, shit, I, we're actually going to win this game. Mm. Like, this is not even close. Then I sat, because at this point it's I late. never thought that Ohio State was going to win, by the way. D- during the even, entire game. Even when they were 16, oh, I was like, this is Clemson. Clemson's like the Golden State Warriors. They fuck around and jack themselves off for a while and then realize they're actually in a game. I'm like, oh, shit, we have to play. God, it took they do every that shit all the time. miracle on earth for Clemson to win that game. That blocked punts. And that was Ohio State's fault. The guy fucking ran right into the kicker. Yeah. That was fourth and 17 from the two. Yeah. And they got the ball again. Every single play, maybe Dabo is right. Maybe he is kissed by Jesus. Mm-hmm. Maybe Jesus Christ only loves him and Clemson. I have no idea. Because my, my kid's asleep at this point. I'm back in the hotel. I'm flying back tomorrow. I'm pissed. I'm obviously on a fucking text thread with all my buddies, right? Um, and then I decide, I was like, man, I, the last text that I sent was like, I don't understand. We... It felt like we dominated that entire game up until the last, I don't know, fucking two mm-hmm. minutes or whatever, right? Um, and so I looked at the I looked at the stats. I'm going to read these out to you here. Ohio State first down, mm-hmm. 28. Clemson got 21 first downs. Mm-hmm. Passing yards. Clemson 259. Ohio State 320. Not even close. <laughs> Rushing. 158 yards for Clemson, 196 for Ohio State. Now, the, the only statistical category that Clemson was was leading in was was penalties. They had six for 47. Ohio well, no, State. They, there was one more important one, and it's the uh, interceptions category. Well, here's the thing with the interceptions, right? The first one was totally legit. It was a shitty throw. Mm-hmm. The one on fields at the end of the game where the uh, the receiver turned the wrong way. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. He said after the game, the receiver did. It's, it's uh, was a it a y, was it a wide split, and he just went the wrong or the quarterback read? Well, what it he wrong said what? was, he goes, "Look, man, I lost this game for it." The receiver did. He said, "I lost this game for us. I thought Fields was going to scramble, mm. therefore I was going to turn left because I thought he was going to roll out and mm. scramble this way." And he goes, I'm, "I was supposed to finish that route." And he goes, "He threw the ball exactly where he should have." You know, 
any quarterback at the end of the game with a minute left and you're trying to win the game, that last interception, I, I'm not pissed at that. The other one was was really bad, but mm. that you take that one away, right? You're down to one, one fucking turnover. That's not going to change the game, in my opinion. The, the thing that changed the game was the targeting call. Um, and uh, and the and the last one I'll bring up here is the time of possession because this is always massive to me because mm-hmm. again it felt like we dominated and had the ball the entire game. Clemson had the ball twenty six minutes and thirty three seconds. Ohio State had the ball thirty three minutes and thirty seconds. Yeah, usually I I give a lot of weight to that. Um, <sighs> Boy, but they had it an extra like if LSU, more than a half a quarter. I, I I wonder what it was for the LSU game. I, that you know that one's tough and that's interesting because they score so goddamn fast. Yes, they man. score so fast that like it wouldn't surprise me if LSU had the ball for three minutes in that entire game and they yeah. had what sixty three points on them. Well, you remember that game that Clay Thompson played where he only dribbled eleven times and he scored six. That's points? exactly what yeah. it felt like being at that game. I was like, oh Jesus! I remember taking a piss, taking my kid to take a piss, and Clemson had scored or uh, LSU had scored two touchdowns. <laughs> so it was thirty three to twenty seven in that game. So six minutes split, but. That's that's really only a three minute split, if you think about it, because three goes both ways. Sure. So it's like three more minutes essentially that yeah, they yeah. held the ball and they scored sixty three points. And so, what, what those numbers you just Very said different. are identical to the numbers that are the the time of possession for Ohio State Clemson mm-hmm. and Ohio State <coughs> had every, one in every statistical category. The only thing I will say about the targeting call that I am amped about is that kid who was projected to go number fifteen in the draft mm-hmm. said, "Fuck you! You took away my college football playoff." Mm-hmm. I'm coming back to play in another one because you guys robbed me of this, and he's coming back next year, so I'm amped about that. But other than that, I'm not amped about any of this. I don't think uh, he's got I, – I don't think it was uh, targeting in that. I don't either. Like, I think Chase Young could have been ejected for his play on that same play. Like, he – so homeboy targets Lawrence, hits him in the head with his helmet. Right. Kind of, a little bit. It's more, mostly in the face mask. It wasn't really crown to crown or anything like that. Right. But Chase Young comes up from the other side and horse collars the fuck, like puts him in a headlock and then throws him down. That's worse to me for, yeah. for a quarterback than, than this shot that this guy took. On that particular play, though, Chase Young was he was getting his helmet ripped off. Doesn't um, matter. You can't fucking hit the no, quarterback I know. like I, that. Doesn't, all of it all the way around. Uh, that being said, before the season started. He was mostly and, getting his hair ripped out. I was just watching it. Yeah. Like yeah. he, you and I both picked Clemson <laughs> before the season started to uh, win the national championship. So yeah. here we are. It's Clemson LSU. Mm-hmm. The spread was monstrous on this. Mm, I guess that, you know what, he did go helmet to helmet pretty hard on the side of his head. Who? Uh, 24, what's his name? Uh, Wade, Wade for Ohio yeah. State. Yeah, he, that was straight up helmet to helmet. Like he he ran right into him. But the, the issue I have with, with, with it, it is wasn't this. usually they don't call targeting unless it's unless the guy's not looking or it's crown to crown. But right. So Lawrence ran the ball sixteen times in that game. ATN by the way was shit. He yeah, had thirty six yards rushing. He wasn't thirty six yards. Um, they gave up on that fucking guy, and he's supposed to be the top running back in the in the draft. Whereas Dobbins put up 174 for Ohio State. Even read, just reading these stats aloud, I'm, it just, I honestly just want to start crying in the microphone. Um, every statistical category. Lawrence in person, though, is 6'6", six, six, and, and a big 6'6", six, six, right? Yeah. The guy who hit him was 6'1", probably 180. Lawrence is, I, that's the biggest physical, godlike quarterback I've seen in person for college in my life, I think. Have you seen a bigger quarterback in college? In college. Um, we were sitting bigger than 6'6". Six, six. No, I don't think. I mean, I Roethlisberger maybe. Yeah. But that was – he didn't really play in a lot of big games. No, he, he played in Miami, what, Ohio. Miami of Ohio. Yeah. So I didn't get to see that but guy play. other than him, I can't really think of any massive dudes like I can't that. either. So 6'1", coming in at 6'6", six, six, like it's tough, man. It's tough. But look, his helmet did hit his other helmet. I get the call. Yeah. I understand the rule. Um, so before everybody you know, jumps on me for that, I understand the rule. I, technically, yes, to the letter of the law, he broke it, and he should get ejected. I don't want to see anybody's best players ever thrown out mm-hmm. of a game. That is just me personally, especially in a game like this, because other than that, this game was pretty – it felt like the national championship. It uh, felt like the real national yeah, championship Yeah, which is funny because LSU right now is minus five and a half. They were six and a half to start. You know oh, that, right? Yeah. 
Let's see where they are. So a lot of people are betting Clemson. As as well you should. You should be betting Clemson. If you're and a gambler. If you're a gambler and you want to make money, I would be betting Clemson and I would be betting the under, which is 69 and a half. Because they're not scoring. Yes. I, I, I think it's going to be similar to the Ohio State game. I think it's going to be two scores in the 20s, maybe the low 30s. Yeah, I, I've got this game at 34-31. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm good with that. 34-31 is my final. I'm going to take the under. And uh, sorry, it's LSU it is six fans. and a half. It on, is not because I hate LSU fans. Um, it's, it's six and a half on fucking my bookie. My yeah, bookie. and you know what? You know what's weird is a lot of gambling sites right now oh, are man. are teasing this up or down based on what they think, because that's too big of a spread in my opinion. I thought it should be three. I thought that, that spread should be three, but because LSU destroyed Oklahoma. I would give them two or three just for playing where they're playing, like where the game's being played. I would yeah. give them because I think it's. Uh, I th- I would probably start out at Clemson minus two. For and this you game. you have Clemson as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I, I want to J- talk just, about if I was setting odds, I would probably start out at Clemson minus two. I would give LSU a first half of like maybe four. That, by the way, that's what the Ohio four. State spread was. It was minus two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I'm 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 in agreement. I'd say three just because of where they're playing, and it could be a field goal game. I, I'm predicting it to be a field goal game. Um, the, here's the thing, LSU fans. The reason why I'm picking Clemson is not because I hate you guys. Uh, I actually love Joe Burrow, and uh, I enjoy watching uh, the LSU team play. It's fun. I like that style of offense. I do not enjoy watching Alabama's style of offense. That is just boring as shit to me. I don't enjoy watching Alabama play. Mm-hmm. Uh, watching Joe Burrow huck it around is fun. It's great. This is going to be a great national championship. I'm amped for that. Um, we're not going because we're going to the McGregor fight. McGregor! Uh, and SHOT Show is right after that, so we get to see Conor McGregor. But uh, otherwise, I'd, I'd be right here with you, probably wearing a Clemson shirt. Uh, <laughs> here's why I'm picking Clemson. And again, it is not because I hate you guys. It is simply based on what I saw in both of these games. I think... The way to exploit LSU's defense is through the run. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is not the way to exploit Ohio State's defense, no. clearly. <clears throat> um, they changed their game plan dr- drastically. I mean, once ATN got stuffed every fucking play, Lawrence started running on his own, and no one was prepared for that. Because I haven't seen yeah. that kid run <clears throat> at all. He's got 500 yards on the season. Which is... Like, quietly. Quietly. Yards, yeah. It's weird. Because he's such a big dude, you just don't expect him to run. He's but huge. But he will... He'll he'll jog down the field for 20 or 30 yards at a time on a very frequent basis, basis apparently, if he's putting up numbers like that. He so had a 67-yard touchdown against Ohio State? Yeah, he's not slow. everybody was so surprised, for, they were like, what? For a, for a 6'6 guy, he's not slow. We all, we've always known that he's nimble in the pocket. Like, he doesn't get sacked a lot, and he doesn't get hit and throw bad picks or anything like that a lot, but I didn't expect him to be running down the field like he that. He looked like a white stallion just gliding down the field. Like gray. I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, yeah. Jesus. So, <clears throat> I, I, look, Clemson... There's no question that he's going to be the number one pick in the draft next year. No, he's number one. And as well, he should be. Fields will be two. If he, if he was... If he had come out after, as a freshman, he should have been number one. If he was in the draft this year, he should be number one. Yeah. Not not because of what he's done in college, because of his body and his brain. Like he, you can turn that guy into a Hall of Fame quarterback without any question. The, by the way, the GMs were really high on him, and they were really high on Fields, and they said, look, man, it's going to be one and two for those guys next year. Uh, Fields, for a different reason. They were like, look, that kid up close mm-hmm. just does not give a fuck about anything. Just ice water in that guy's yeah. veins. And... <laughs> Surprisingly, in this game, he didn't run. He barely ran at all, whereas Lawrence ran all the fucking time. And uh, and Fields had more passing yards. You never really see that. It's hard to run on Clemson in general, typically. Yes. So wasn't so much in this game because well, J.K. Dobbins, J.K. Dobbins is a goddamn beast. Yeah. But uh, the problem with this, and here's where I think it comes down to: I think Clemson's run game is set up to go through LSU's defense, and this does two things. Um, not only does it advance the ball, but it eats up a lot of fucking clock. Yeah. And with a high-powered offense like LSU, they need the ball over and over and over again, right? Yep. It's, you're going to see a heavy dose of, of ATN. I think you're going to see a heavy dose of, of Lawrence running the ball. I think def- defensively, look, the corners are great for LSU. The corners are great for Clemson. I think this is going to come down to Clemson's linebacker. Uh, that kid's a fucking superstar mm. and he's going to get after joe burrow and make him uncomfortable uh i think this game is going to be a classic one of the best we've seen it should be a really good game yeah in, in a while <clears throat> um but i think ultimately in the end here's what i i really think it's going to come down to 
that Hilaire kid for LSU mm. was he's their guy that you dump off the ball to. He could run for 30 yards. Mm. Uh, you can hand off the ball to him. He was great. He's not healthy, man. He was in the barely played in the in the Oklahoma game a couple of plays. He's got a hamstring injury. I realize they've been off for 16 days. You cannot, and you can attest to this. You can't cure a hamstring injury in 16 days. No, no. Um, so he'll play a little bit, but I think it's going to come down to that. And the the corners of of Clemson are really fucking good. Clemson's entire defense is good. I think their linebackers are not as good as they were last year. That one guy, dude, I forget his fucking name, but he just laid the wood to people in that Ohio State game. The linebacker? Mm-hmm. Um, hang on, I fucking remember his God face. damn it, he was great. Um, um, so, th- that's what I think it's going to come down to, and I think LSU is really going to miss that kid in this game. Uh, if, if you're Clemson, you've got to come out to a better start than you did against Ohio State. Isaiah Simmons. Isaiah Simmons. That dude is a fucking monster. Monster. He's Monster. six six four, like two forty. Watch for him in the backfield <laughs> over and over and over again. That's yeah. what we we saw it against Ohio State. <laughs> Fields had to throw that ball real quick. He yeah. had to get it out of there real fast. Um, so I think those deep balls, because look, Burroughs is is a great quarterback. Yep, he's going to have to throw a lot of shorter passes. But Hilaire's not going to be there. You're not going to be able to throw those deep balls against Clemson corner. I don't think. Well, I mean, look, Burroughs, uh, the nightmare that these. Uh, NFL GMs have for him might come true in this game. I could see him throwing a couple. Of, he's he's not a guy that throws picks very often, mm-hmm. but when you're getting hit by a dude that's running a four one forty and he's two hundred thirty pounds, yeah, and you don't really throw the ball well down the field, bad things happen. Because I mean, look, you look at Justin <laughs> Fields against against Clemson. He threw two picks. You know how many interceptions he threw all year? Four, I think. One. Oh, one. One. He doubled it. In the Clemson game, yeah, through one pick all year, simply because that pressure that they're—I well, mean—they are coming after you. Yeah, I mean Clemson. Other than Baylor, they were the top major school in takeaways. Yeah, you can say yeah they were playing the ACC. Well, they played Ohio State and took two away from them, so you can't really make that argument anymore. They're going to get some picks. They're going to get some fumbles for sure. Yeah, um, it just <laughs> depends on where and when is the is the is the issue for them. So we both have Clemson. I am going yard on this. Uh, I don't. We don't typically say what we make on these bets. Um, I'm up over four thousand dollars on the bowl game season. Mm-hmm. I am rolling all of that over onto Clemson. Now, my bookie. I don't. I'll have to go back in today. But they, look, as of yesterday, they'd only let me bet a max of two thousand on this game. So I took the points and I bought one. I bought bought it up to seven and a half uh, uh, for Clemson, and then. And that was two thousand, so I maxed that out at two thousand, and then the other two thousand I put on the money line of Clemson, which pays off at thirty six hundred dollars. So I'm going four thousand dollars. I'm going all of my bowl game winnings <laughs> on Clemson for this game and to win the national championship. Yeah, I'm doing the same. Are, are you really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll, we'll post this in Drinking Bros Sports. Obviously. If you're a member of the Facebook page, it is private, but we've posted every single bet we've made the entire year I for all the stupid shit. Um, and uh, it's been it's been an unbelievably <laughs> magical run. I'm going to put all four grand on this game. Just because Ohio State's not in it, and I want to watch it, and I really want to root for something yeah. in this. Um, well, we're going to be... We'll be at Shot Show then, right? Or is this... This is this Monday. That is this Monday, yeah. So yeah. we're... Well, I guess we'll just be here. We'll be here. Um, nice. I wonder if we can just put it on live and just watch it with, with everybody. Yes, our producer Jamie is saying yes. Uh, we'll talk about it. I don't know yeah, what we'll you're do doing that. that night. But uh, um, drugs? What am I ever doing? Yeah. Um, but the, hey, here's – and so LSU, here's what I'm going to say about this um, for you guys. If you do win, I think that LSU deserves to be named the greatest team of all time. I know Clemson and Dabo Sweeney self-anointed last year's team – as the greatest college football team of all time because they went 16 or 15 or no. First to ever do it. They also beat the fucking balls off of Alabama. They beat Alabama and Notre Dame badly. Well, Notre Dame doesn't count, Dan. They that's don't a, ever that's count. That's the Oklahoma for sure. of this year. I'm just saying they played two CFP games and they fucking wrecked both teams. They, they did, but they didn't play anyone else the entire year. They didn't have to. They didn't play anybody this year, and they just beat the best team that I've ever seen. But like, LSU, I thought Ohio State was the best team that I've – like the most complete college football team I've ever seen. That, by the way, that's what every GM said. That is the most complete college football team we've ever yeah. seen in person. And uh, But yeah, – They didn't win. 
Clemson has some kind fucking of, win. Clemson, they're like the fucking uh, early 80s or uh, late 80s twins. Like, this group of fucking retards should not be winning. You know what I mean? <sighs> it's crazy. Like Kirby Puckett was great, but other than him, like, who else was on that team that was great? Know. Nobody, man. And I don't know. And they've got the number one recruiting class, too, so they're not going anywhere. No. They're um, but I, I would say this, it, literally, because of um, LSU playing all the ranked teams they played this year, um, because with this game, this Clemson game, mm-hmm. this will put them at uh, seven ranked teams that they played this year. Or no, I'm sorry, six. Um, and Ohio State had played six. Mm-hmm. Now they'll be at six if they beat Clemson, because they beat the brakes off of Alabama too. Mm-hmm. Um, LSU did. Uh, you've got to put them at the greatest team to replace Clemson last year of, of all time. <laughs> With the offense they've put up, with the stats they've put up, if they beat this Clemson team, in my opinion, LSU, this team, this year, will be mm. the greatest team assembled. I'm just hoping that it's as good a game as I think it's going to be. I thought last year with Alabama rolling into that game, I knew – we talked about this before the game. I knew before the game started, I'm like, Clemson's going to beat the shit out of this Alabama. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We bet uh, on Last year was different because we had money at the beginning of the season on Clemson to win. We did this year. The problem was it was – Two and a half to one this yeah, year. Yeah, it wasn't like last year was like eighteen to one or whatever the eight fuck. to one. I think yeah, eight, like eight or six to one. It was awesome. Um, but uh, so if you're an LSU fan and you guys win this game, I, look, you deserve to be called the greatest team of all time. P- the problem with it is we're never going to hear the end of it. Um, I'm t- I'm so torn on this game because on the on the other flip side of this, Clemson doesn't play anybody all year. For them just to walk into the playoffs every year isn't fair to me. Like it's just such it's so it sucks. I looked at their upcoming schedule for next year too. I was like, do they they have one ranked opponent? They've won. Well, you don't know. You do. They're, they're already set. So the schedule is just set for. Yeah, next I know, year. but you don't know what the rankings are going to be. I, I, you kind of do. <clears throat> um, they they play one. You know who it is? Texas A and M. Notre Dame. Oh, good. <laughs> good. That's great. <laughs> Notre Dame. <clears throat> so. Uh, to me, there should be an asterisk next to this fucking team, man, because it's going to be two straight years that, you know, they just breeze through to the playoffs and only have to win two games every year. I fucking hate it personally. It is what it is. And uh, I'm, I'm the shine of Dabo Sweeney is off of me. I'm tired of, oh, man, uh, we got we got to win 30 games a year to get some respect. And uh, I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Every time you do that, Dabo Sweeney, this reminds me of Ricky Gervais at the Golden Globes. You're not that important. Clemson is not that important that Jesus Christ himself only loves you and your goddamn football team that he hates everyone else. So he wanted everyone to lose their fucking games because Jesus loves you, Dabo Sweeney. Shut the fuck up with that. Like, I'm so sick and tired of hearing that shit. Oh, man. Uh, you know, none of this would have been possible without Jesus. If Jesus exists, and I hope he does, none of us would exist without him. So are we shittier than you, Dabo? You fuck. Take it on down the road, fucking Andy Griffith. Go skip fucking stones on a goddamn pond with Opie. I don't want to hear that shit anymore in a Dabo Sweeney. I'm all fucking done with Jesus is the reason for all of this. You know what this sounds like to me? It sounds like jealousy. It's not. It I, it's not because I, I, I dislike both you, your teams team just equally. Got, your team just got fucking spanked. They didn't get spanked. Two weird calls and now you're butthurt. Three. Three shitty calls, but it's not. Dead serious. Here's what bothered me about it. The fucking first interview. Dabo Sweeney after the game, what happened? Ha! Huh, I want to thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for this win. Did he hate? Does he hate Ohio State? Dennis Leary used to make fun of Reggie White for that all the time. God damn it! it. Apparently, Jesus is a huge Green Bay Packers fan. I guess. Apparently, <laughs> apparently, he's only a Clemson fan too. So I don't want to hear the Jesus speeches anymore. I don't want to hear how through Christ anything is possible. There is so many Ohio State players and LSU players who believe in Jesus as well. Yeah. Do none of them deserve to win a national championship this year? Fuck off with that. Uh, Man, uh, we got to win 60 games to get some respect. No, you don't. You just have to play one ranked team. Just one ranked team. Just once a year. Play one fucking ranked team. Because the problem with it is, if you're in Alabama or in LSU, or uh, in Ohio State, right? Mm -hmm. You have to play six ranked teams to get to the goddamn playoffs? Six? Clemson played zero to get to the playoffs. Like, you're going to lose one of those games or it's going to be close. Like the LSU-Auburn game, for example. It's a great example. 
It was a one-score game. It was super close at the end. If Auburn gets that onside kick, maybe they win that game. And everybody was like, oh, I think LSU's slipping. No, they're not slipping. They're playing a conference game against a ranked team that's hard as fuck. Yeah. Like, to keep doing that week in and week out is hard as fuck. Same with the Ohio State-Wisconsin thing. Playing them twice, hard as fuck. You're not going to be great the second game. You will never be great the second game. And that's going to spill into our fucking NFL picks, too, because there's a couple of these teams who have played each other already. They're not mm. going to win again. Ten- Tennessee Titans, I'm going to say this before we get to the sponsors, are not going to beat the Chiefs again. No. At home. But there's no fucking way in hell that's happening. You mean the weekend. Ravens? No. Uh, Texans, I'm sorry, the Texans. Oh, yeah. yeah yes. No. The Texans are not beating. They beat KC at home. They're not going to come into KC and win again. I can promise you that. It's too tough to win twice against the same fucking team. So I'll be sitting with, either with you or at home or whatever the fuck we're doing on Monday night and uh, with a, some form of Jesus statue for Dabo and then a bucket of puke for the LSU fans. And uh, I'll, I'll put one hand in each and we'll figure out what happens. But for now... Financially, all I care about is betting, gambling, and winning money. And I'm putting four thousand U.S. American dollars on Clemson and Jesus. I guess maybe he'll bless me with four grand in my bank account, and we'll see what happens. Uh, let's get to the sponsors, Dan. I'm fucking hot today. Ghostbed.com forward slash Drinking Bros is our first one. Uh, man, if you've not laid your dick in a ghost bed, you are not living your life. <clears throat> Uh, you know who who says ghost bed is the best bed in the mass mattress in America? Uh, we do. Uh, Jesus. Mm. Apparently, Jesus said. Uh, so they're selling right now. Their deal is they're giving a bucket of holy water away with every mattress you get an adjustable base. Um, so go there now, uh, or you can just burn in eternal damnation. Uh, either way. Either way. You good. You good. We're not saying that you're going to go to hell. If you're sleeping on something other than a ghost bed. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to hell if you don't sleep on a ghost bed. What Sorry. is it? The body, the spirit, and the Holy Ghost bed? Is that is that the Bible? What's the uh, what's the saying? Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. There you go. I wasn't even close to that. Um, wasn't even close to that. You can get a Holy Ghost bed at ghostbed.com more slash drinking bros today. They got new pillows, mattresses. If you're a military or first responder, you get 15% off the entire store. As always, they got a 36 month pay as you go program. No one is doing that in the business. I don't I don't know if they extended that twenty five percent off. Yet. If uh, they did though, hop on it, dude. Uh, things are going to get wet. It's going to get wet. Yeah, and by the way, if you haven't uh, been offended yet on today's show, write in and tell us what you believe in. We'll make fun of that, too. <laughs> it's not that. Uh, by the way, I love Jesus. I love all every God you can imagine, except for Allah. I don't, really don't believe in, in all that bullshit. 25% They don't let women do everything. anything. Yeah, yeah, that sale's still going on. Is it really? For the next at least 11 hours. I don't know if they're going to extend it. Fuck that. Go now. Uh, 25% off. <clears throat> Ghostbed.com forward slash Stringer Bros. By the way, love every God. Love Jesus. I just do not agree with any athlete or musician says Jesus was the reason that they beat everyone for a, a trophy. I do not. I do not believe that. I don't believe in yourself. Dan does, and he's doing fucking great. Doing well, great professionally. Yeah. Personally, my life is a piece of shit. But I mean, <laughs> professionally, I do well. So that's really what matters. <laughs> Uh, next up, we got uh, buyraycon.com forward slash drinking bros. Uh, they hit us up and they said, "Hey, you forgot to read last week." I was like, "Man, we were we were gone because of New Year's and all that shit." And I was like, "Man, ironically, all me, my kids, all of us have these Raycon headphones." I was like, "We were listening to them in, in the cabin in the woods." So uh, we had we had a blast. I love I love their products. I love their fucking headphones. Buy Raycon.com forward slash Drinking Bros. The best wireless headphones on the planet at an affordable price is the important part of this. All the drinking bros are, are been, been sending messages saying, "Hey man, I really appreciate this." With that promo, that that URL, buyraycon.com forward slash drinking bros, knocks down fifty five bucks. Um, and these things charge in a fucking case uh, six hours plus. Man, you're you're running around, uh, jacking off, robbing neighborhoods, whatever you're doing with headphones on. Um, maybe you're listening to the national championship game. Um, you can do it. With uh, Raycon headphones, go to buyraycon.com forward slash drinking bros today. Get yourself some fine, fine headphones. And they come in a bunch of different colors. Um, and your ear holes aren't going to fuck it up because they got a bunch of rubber pieces for those. And uh, man, I'm hot today, Dan. My bookie. 
Uh, yeah, of course, my bookie. <laughs> Said them at the top, I'm going to say them again. Look, they're going to get a lot of love this week, brother. Mm-hmm. At least from the two of us. I have, we have eight thousand dollars. I bet you my bookie's listening to the show saying, "Please do not win." They're the biggest LSU fans right now are my bookie. <laughs> go if you don't believe these bets are going down, we will place the we place all the betting slips there. We go to mybookie.com forward slash Dringer Bros. We bet. Type in the promo code Dringer Bros. It'll double your deposit up to a thousand dollars. I am. We are all in. Eight thousand dollars on Clemson. Jesus Christ. And it is all because of all because of uh, mybookie.com. So we've I, I look, they were I had four shitty NFL weeks this year. Other than that, I've been absolutely destructive. The cool thing about it is we have listeners that don't even listen to Dringer Bros. All mm-hmm. they want to hear is the fucking spreads. So I'm sure that rant I just went on for 20 minutes of like, hey man, can you just shut the fuck up and mm-hmm. give us the NFL spreads? I will. I will. Uh, and you can bet on mybookie.com forward slash Dringer Bros. Today, uh, promo code Dringer Bros. Double that deposit all the way to a thousand dollars. A lot of wild shit going on. Um, Killcliffcbd.com, by the way. Mm-hmm. Man, is there anybody that needs that right now more than me? No, you need to calm the fuck down and move on with this. I got shit to do. Let's go. Let me throw me a fucking can of that grape, dude. Or is it here? Yeah, you got one. Do I have one? All right, I'm gonna <clears> have a fucking can of this grape right now. Um, Killcliffcbd.com, best in the biz, dude. It fucking calms people like me down. Gets my fucking beeho uh, shrunk, shrunken in. Because right now it's wide. It's gaping mm-hmm. a little bit. You have a wide on in your butthole. I do. And I shouldn't. Uh, I'm talking a lot of shit today. So when I got a wide on in my beehole. Um, KillCliffCBD.com. Dude, promo code Dringer Bros, 20% off and uh, free shipping. It's the best in the bitch. 25 milligrams in every single can. I'm going to hold up the camera right now. And I'm going to fucking drink a can live on the air. Because I've earned it. I've earned it today. I worked out early this morning. Typically I drink it after a workout. I drink one can every single day. I love it. I use my own promo code. Um, I'm always worried they're going to call me out on it. Go to KillCliffCBD.com now. Mango, orange, grape. Grape is my fucking favorite. I love it very, very much. D'Anthony, let's get into the uh, NFL picks, uh, shall we? We were off last week. Um, I still posted picks in Drinking Bro Sports on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Again, join the private group if you're not in there. Uh, I went two and two. I was really, really surprised. Um, about Tom Brady, man. Yeah, he looked listless, like he didn't really care about being there anymore. It was very odd. It's weird. I haven't seen that out of him before. I haven't either. It looked like he was ready to pack his bags to go to whatever city he's going to. What happens to this team? Let me ask you this. Because, look. All the coaches are going to leave now. Well, they did. So like Belichick, Joe Judge, who yeah, I didn't even know was a, the wide receivers coach, yeah. a person in this life. Uh, Belichick's done a good job of hanging on to his coaches over the years. They've mm-hmm. paid them more or whatever the fuck to keep them there, but it's not going to work this year. So I don't know about the players. I don't know what their contract situations are like, but uh, I don't think – I don't know why Brady would come back to that team, either retire or go somewhere else, I guess. Yeah. I, look, he wants to play. He said after the game, I'm going to play. I'm not retiring. Um, so, therefore, man, I – my gut feeling is this. I think he gets another offer from you know probably four or five teams. Mm-hmm. And then he walks into Robert Kraft's office after he gets jacked off. Right after a J-off session. After who? Kraft. Okay. Kraft gets jacked off. Um, probably an Asian masseuse. They get the table in the office. He gets, he gets in a sweet J-off sesh. And he goes, look, man, give me some fucking wide receivers. Mm-hmm. And I, something tells me he comes back for two more years to, Maybe. to the Patriots. I don't want to see that happen just because of a storyline. I'd love to see him go to the Bears or I don't want to see him go to the Chargers because, well, I think at the new stadium next year. Um, but it's L.A. I mean, he, he probably wants to be in L.A. with all his bullshit. One would think is TB12 shitting his brains out. I know he wants to spread that, that joy across the world like, like Scientology. So we'll see. Uh, it was a very strange game to watch. I, it's one of those things, man, where it felt like a band breaking up like, he didn't want to be around Belichick, mm-hmm. vice versa. The receivers were dropping balls. Um, you knew Derrick Henry was going to run the ball every suck fucking play. Yeah. That mm-hmm. is not a surprise. Why you couldn't stop that, and they have one of the best defenses in the league, it's crazy to me. Um, they still only held him to, fuck, 13 points. He is a large man. The last one was a, a pick six. He's a fucking animal. Um, six three two. Lost me my goddamn one of my fantasy football championships because he sat that game out Yeah, for no reason. Yeah. Uh, 
So, I don't know. I'll be curious. Uh, Joe Judge just got hired as the coach of the Giants. That is uh, classic Giants, just hiring a coach that no one knows and or cares about. Mm -hmm. And they're just going to be stuck there for ever. Uh, You know who they're hiring as their offensive coordinator? Who's that? Jason Garrett. Yeah. It's Mm -hmm. real. It's real life. Um, that's, that's is that real? Breaking news right now. Sources are saying Jason Garrett is going to be the OC for the Giants. You guys are <laughs> fucked for many, 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 many years to come. Jesus, you can enjoy Christ, all dude. of that. Josh McDaniels is starting to interview today mm-hmm. with teams. What I'm hearing is Cleveland. Mm. They have the talent, man. They don't have a quarterback, but they have the talent. They have every other skilled position there. Uh, I like. I like. The defense, too, if Miles Mel- Garrett ever comes back in place. But uh, they have the talent, man. They just need a new fucking coach and a new scheme. I don't know what you do with Baker Mayfield, but uh, he's taking interviews right now. How do you feel about the Mike McCarthy hire for the Cowboys? I, I love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Cowboys I'm, fans hate it for I'm, some reason. I'm fine with that. I don't see what the problem is. He, so here's the thing with Mike McCarthy, to me. He was always great. It was Aaron Rodgers going against him audible and calling all this fucking bullshit. Mm-hmm. Like, with a good run team... And let's face it, you're you're walking into a team with Ezekiel Elliott, yeah, um, and a quarterback who will listen to you. Because even though I don't think Dak Shepard is or not Dak Shepard, uh, Dak Prescott, yeah, I don't think Either Dak way. Prescott is the dude uh, for the long run. I think for a short run, he will listen, he will pay attention, and he doesn't have the type of ego where he wants to throw eighty touchdowns a game. So I think it's a great fit, man. I don't mm-hmm. know why people are bitching about it. To be honest with you, I don't either. I mean, Cowboys fans have been. Uh Bitching to get a new coach in there with some winning experience. And when a Super Bowl has been in the playoffs every single year. Yeah. What are you going to do? I just think Aaron Rodgers turned into a dick. And I think it was because of fantasy football. When Aaron Rodgers turned into a dick was when he was scoring, you know, throwing for six touchdowns a game, won the MVP, and every fantasy yeah. person was like, you're the best. And he's like, well, i got to throw six touchdowns every game. No, you don't. You're going to hand the ball off to Aaron Jones. And we're going to get into that game in a second because the Packers could be in the Super Bowl. If Rodgers can check his ego and just hand off to Aaron Jones. Um, and I enjoy, I enjoy it. Like, fuck, it's great for the game. I'd love to see the Packers. I'd love to see Packers Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Yep. It'd be awesome. Um, so we'll see. But uh, Mike McCarthy, I, I like the hire, man. I wouldn't bitch about it. I think he's going to be able to corral these people. Now, whether or not he can get past Jerry Jones bullshit and not let Jerry Jones control him, I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. But, uh, you know, the Bills-Texans game was fun to watch. Um, Josh Allen, I love watching that kid play. Wild as shit at the end. Did you see that 60-yard 50-50 ball he threw to the fullback? 245-pound mm. fullback? Man, you want to talk about not giving a fuck. He reminds me of Brett Favre, mm. uh, like a young Brett Favre. He's going to be great if they get him some receivers and some talent around him. <laughs> he got this team all the way to the playoffs. I think the Bills' future looks bright, man. Mm. I, that coach is great. Josh Allen's great. Um, I think that Singletary kid's going to be good in the backfield too, man. I'm I'm psyched on the Bills. This was a shitty loss, but this kid had to learn. He's only 24 fucking years old. And uh, let's face it, he should have won this game multiple times. So I think they're fine. I think the Bills are fine. Um, Tennessee's not winning next week, so it doesn't really matter. The shocker to me, the biggest shocker, is you were the Saints winning the Super Bowl this year. <clears throat> yeah. Did you watch that game, Viking Saints? I uh, watched the end. Yeah, they looked like shit, though. The entire game? Yeah. It wasn't close. No. Nope. It wasn't close the entire game. The Vikings were one of my sleeper teams this year, but I didn't know if Dalvin Cook would be able to come back and be healthy. He tore their faces off. Yeah, he looked pretty good. The Saints defense, <clears throat> man, they did all they could. Breeze looked off. Something looked off. He just could not complete the ball. He seemed nervous about something. Yeah, it was weird with him. I don't know what his deal was. I think maybe he was injured. Maybe. Uh, but the window, here's the sad thing for the Saints, because I enjoy this team. I like Kamara. I like Breeze. Uh, Michael Thomas is the best wide receiver in football. Mm-hmm. I enjoy watching the Saints play. Um, I love that stadium too, man. I'm a big fan of that. You and I have been there before. Um, big fan of that stadium. <sighs> the window is closing, though. You got to get, uh, get Breeze for one, two more years here. He's got two more years, I think, and that's it. It'd be, it'd be weird if he retired with only one Super Bowl. To me. Yeah, I mean he's yeah. That's that is. It's weird now that he only has one. He's great. He doesn't. Uh, he doesn't deserve that. Um, but although I don't know, he deserved it in the last game. He didn't. He just didn't look right uh, for this upcoming week. Man, 
first of all, three out of four games were bangers. All four, actually. If Wentz doesn't get hurt, mm-hmm. Seattle only won by eight in that game. Wentz doesn't get hurt. All four of those games were great. These four games are not so great looking on mm-hmm. paper. We'll get to them now. Vikings against the 49ers. This is at San Francisco. This is San Francisco minus seven. The Vikings still have the hot hand. Or you think 49ers roll them? Uh, I'm taking the Vikings with the points, but the 49ers to win. I think seven's too much. Mm. We'll see. I, actually, let me look on my bookie and see what it is. I wonder if that's going up or down. What the fuck? To me, man, I, I think the Vikings gave it their all against New Orleans. Mm-hmm. And 49ers are rested. Kyle Shanahan, man, look, he was the offensive coordinator for the Falcons the year that they went to the Super Bowl, and then he got hired after that. He's a fucking genius when you give him some time, mm-hmm. and uh, I think he designs a game plan that fucking wrecks them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the 49ers, and I'm going to take this down a half a point. Um, I'm going to take it at six and a half. What's it on my bookie? Seven. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it at six and a half. Really? So you don't think it's going to be a field goal game? No, I just think it's going to be a touchdown game, so I don't want to waste time betting a push. Uh, the Vikings have had a great season, but uh, to win two in a row on the road against arguably, uh, to me, I mean, the, the 49ers and the Saints have been the, the two best teams in the NFC all year. So, man, I, I'm going to, there's no way the Vikings can do that twice. I'm going to take the 49ers minus six and a half. That is the day game on Saturday. By the way, love Saturday playoff football games, man. There's nothing better in this world. Uh, next up, we got Titans at the Ravens. Um, whew, this is Baltimore minus 10. It's nine and a half. <clears throat> well, I, uh, 10's a big boy spread for a playoff game. This is the divisional round of the playoffs. Yeah. Um, I Again, I, I, I think I'll take the Titans plus nine and a half. Actually, I'll probably take that up to 10, but I'll bet the – I think the Ravens are going to win. I think 10's too many points. I did too, man. Um <clears throat> Shit. So many fucking points, man. I have a problem with this. Although the Ravens are rested, Mark Ingram should be healthy and ready to go. Lamar Jackson. I I just think this Titans team is shitty. They gave it all they had against New England. Maybe, but Derrick Henry is a game changer. He is, but he's the only person there. I mean, look, I know Davis has had a great year, and Tannehill has made all of the right moves, seemingly. Mm. I think the Ravens win this game. I don't know about 10 points, though. Yeesh. I might just skip that and bet the money line for the Ravens. I mean, it's playoff time now. So yeah, who cares? I, I, that that that's probably where I'm leaning now. I mean, ten is so many, I, but it also wouldn't surprise me if the Ravens blew them out by 14 or 18. You know? Yeah. Uh, Sunday's games, man. Another one minus 10. Texans at the Chiefs. Now the Texans played at the Chiefs earlier in the season. It was a great game. I don't know if you watched it, but it was 31-24. Um, I enjoyed every single second of that game. It was a blast to watch Mahomes against Watson. To me, the Texans looked like shit last week. Mm -hmm. And they pulled it together at the (laughs) end against a a rookie quarterback, a young quarterback. He's not a rookie, but second-year quarterback who made a lot of mistakes. Who Look, let's face it. The Bills should have won that game. Yeah. Um, They don't have Will Fuller 5. I think that makes a fucking difference. Uh, Chiefs. It's Chiefs all day, and I'm going to take this at nine and a half. I'm going to take it. It's at nine now. So is I'm it nine? De- I'm definitely. I I had it straight up at ten. I was going to take it at ten, to be honest. Woo. So it's at nine on my bookie. Yeah, that means everybody's betting the, the Texans. I'm 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 with you, man. I'm going to take that down. Maybe I'll, I'm, I'm going to buy one point and take it at eight. I think. Okay. Um, I can see this being a I see this being a thirty twenty one game, uh, nine points. I'm going to do that, but I, look, I love the Chiefs and. Uh, I'm still look. That was my team that I predicted to go to win the Super Bowl. Yeah, I'm sticking with them. Uh, last but not least, we got the Seahawks at the Packers. This is the night game on Sunday. Man, this is a banger, dude. Minus four. Uh, minus four for Green Bay. Yeah, I'm taking the Packers. Minus I am four. too, man. I am going to buy a point and a half though, and take this at two and a half. I think this is a field goal game. I don't like the Seahawks. I don't like Russell Wilson. But every game they play is close, whether or not they're better than the other team or they're not. He's, as much as I hate him, he's got the fucking heart of a champion. Yeah. And uh, 
I hate the guy, and I really can't stress that enough. And uh, they never cover. So I think a two and a half is probably right for this. And that's where I'm going to take that. I'm going to take the Packers. So that'll leave us with, if this comes true, Packers, 49ers. That game will be at 49ers. Yeah, and Ravens, Chiefs. Ravens, Chiefs. Does it get better than that? Lamar Jackson against uh, Pat Mahomes. Yeah. Jimmy G <clears throat> against Aaron Rodgers. I'll watch those games. Woo! Boss. Uh, if something else happens, though, if the Chiefs are out, oh, man, if the Chiefs lose and the Packers lose. In the Ravens. Yeah, the uh, you conference can just finals go are going to be burn the NFL. <laughs> just throw them all in a fucking, all these teams in a dumpster and just light it on fire. Um, last but not least here, I'm going to, I'm going to give uh, Drink a Bro of the Week to Craig Dulesky. I said, I said I would only, it was him and Sean, Sean Daigle, Sean Thomas, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know anyone's names. A bunch of Sean's. A lot of Sean's, Sean's in this world. Too many Irish people. Um, he sent me a Miami Dolphins flag. And he said, dude, why is it not upset why, on the set? Why will you not pull it out? We deserve it. No, you don't. The Dolphins are, are fucking the horrific. The Dolphins are getting ready to use their f- fucking fifth pick on to Tua. take Tua so you can get fucked Tua. with all that. However, today, Craig, I'm pulling out the Dolphins flag for you on the set. Go to the YouTube show. Subscribe on uh, Drinking Bros Podcast. The reason being is if the Dolphins don't win that game against the Patriots, mm-hmm. the Patriots have a bye. They wouldn't have even had to play last week. That wouldn't have been Tom Brady's fucking thing. Yeah. The swan song, they would have had two weeks off to get ready for mm-hmm. whatever team they were going to play, get healthy. The only reason they are not is because they lost to the Dolphins. Hmm. So That's fine. They did something in this world this year. Um, and congratulations. They sucked a little bit less than you thought they were going to suck, which is about as good as you're going to get <laughs> from a fucking Miami Dolphins team. <laughs> Oh, brother. Uh, breaking news. Panthers have hired a uh, Baylor head coach uh, rule. Seven years, $60 million. Jesus, Jesus Christ. That is awful. That's awful. All right. Well, Over Ron Rivera, yeah. Um, that's a weird time. I feel like you could be coach now. Yeah. This doesn't matter. Joe Judge and then the coach of Baylor is now an NFL coach? Eh, let Dan coach. Mm. Let Dan coach. Uh, subscribe to the show on YouTube. Sign up for the private Facebook group on uh, Drinking Bros Sports on, on Facebook. You can see all of our bets on mybookie.com forward slash Drinking Bros. Promo code Drinking Bros doubles your deposit all the way to $1,000. I have a feeling everyone will be watching this game on Monday mm-hmm. night along with us. We have $8,000 on this game. Join us and uh, enjoy the national championship, mm-hmm. kids. Remember, LSU, if you win, you are the greatest team in all time, in my opinion. For real. Uh, good night, everyone!